Hello my fragrance lovers and my good smelling companions. Dominic here for Fragrance Reviews and today we are continuing a series of uh, the scent library from Pen Hannigans and we're going to hopefully finish this up within the next uh, two or three videos. Um, and today's one we're looking at, uh, th these are those sort of posh and fairly pricey um, fragrances by Pen Hannigan and they're very English as well. Uh, today's one is going to be called the Tragedy of Lord George, and we're going to be looking at that and comparing it also with Blenheim Bouquet, or Bouquet, sorry. So um, the first one we're going to be doing, as I said, yeah, The Tragedy of Lord George, and this one, the design is not um, the typical, the usual thing with the the, um, the nice uh, crystal, the glass ball on the top and the ribbon. This one has actually got a deer head on the, on the top of it, and then you have this sort of brownish juice sort of complementing um, the whole sort of um, theme uh, as you can see there on the picture. This is our um, bottle and uh, you know some people will actually buy this just because the bottle is so beautiful or pretty much just because of that and you know um, that's a big reason why some people might just just um, you know I've heard that before but uh, some of them are just so so nice and presentable uh, that people just want to have that <laughs> extra cologne and it's a big um, uh, sort of um, attraction or magnet for people to, to buy the, uh, the perfume. Um, no, okay, so this one, the, the theme, you know, Lord George, you know, uh, so wealthy, respected man, you know, uh, the theme is that, you know, um, sort of very clean and uh, so there's a note in there like shaving soap, for example, you know, and, you know, it says, um, uh, Okay, well, he's the archetype, uh, he's respected uh, archetype patriarch, you know, and he seems to embody the, um, the respect virtues of the, um, the aristocracy, you know, and um, virtue, respect, loyalty and faithfulness. So uh, a, lot, a lot of these are descriptions, uh, there's a lot of fluff in them really, but um, I don't usually go over the whole thing for you, but that's just a little I decided to read there to get, give a bit of background as to why it's called, you know, Lord George. Um, Anyway, so um, now this one is, um, this is something I'm going to, uh, I'm looking forward to trying. It is, again, one of the fairly hefty old price on it, you know, and uh, therefore it's going to be a treat to uh, have a go at this one and um, sort of give you, some, you know, some of my ideas on how, how I think it does. Uh, and I have been looking forward to this. Um, it has got that sort of brownish um, coloured juice in it. And um, yeah, let, let's get this open. Let's see what it has to say for itself anyway. Uh, again, as I said, the issue I have with Penhaligon is that the, the non longevity isn't amazing. It'll still stay on your skin a long time. But then then you've also got this um, this price problem as well with them, um, according to, well, you know, everybody knows that they're quite pricey, really. So that is also a bit of an issue. They are lovely perfumes, don't get me wrong. And sometimes that might just be that, that you can just about shell out for it or you know it might be that gift that really makes a certain someone happy whom you think it really will suit okay enough of that and let's um let's get some of this beautiful juice on my skin and um wow that's divine Oh my gosh, that is really, really nice. What can I compare that to? It's, um, oh man, yes, it's, I forgot to say, both of these are masculine uh, perfumes, these two that I'm reviewing today. So both really for men, these male perfumes. Ah, wow, now that is, yeah, you can get something masculine, you can get something um, a little bit woodsy maybe, maybe something herbal, but it, it's a, uh, maybe a bit alcoholic oh, musky kind of thing um, hmm. well um, it's certainly doing well as that introduction when it dries down I'm not too sure how it'll be or um, again you know how long it'll last or I think it's gonna have a fairly fairly good projection ah oh, it does yeah it sort of um, it makes you think of that and um, Sort of that brownish theme is kind of um uh 
it's very masculine. It's almost, I, I can see myself like maybe wearing this to a jazz club or wearing this with a suit on, you know, so it's, uh, it's classy. It's um, trying to get um, sort of character and virtue across as well somehow, you know. Um, but anyway, so the main things in this one are going to be sort of a brandy, a shaving soap, believe it or not, and that sounds a bit funny perhaps, but it's actually that lovely sort of hygienish, clean hygiene sort of um, soapish, and then it's got the tonka bean as well. So you've got that nice kind of vibey, spice, masculine, soapy, uh, beautiful, soothing, uh, it's sophisticated, it's very smooth, it's very classy. Uh, someone who wears this, um, for a start, to have had a nice, expensive, beautiful bottle is already saying something about that person. It's very elegant, it's extremely sort of manly, but in a kind of a formal way. And then there's that cleanness to it, there's a freshness. Somebody who just got things together, you know, he's he's that kind of a classy gentleman, and he just has an excellent cologne. <laughs> Um, wow, that was very, very impressive, and um, you know I'm going to give it something like at least, yeah, a good eight out of ten anyway for a for a perfume because, you know, despite the fact that it's um, it, it's Ben Halligan's and, and I've already spoken about some of the draw, drawbacks of that, still it's it's amazing, um, beautifully crafted bottle. It is amazing juice in there. The, the kind of colour just kind of goes with the whole theme that they've got as well, of the kind of um, brandy the kind of the deer kind of, you know so uh i'm really loving it and it's got a kind of a sweetness to it oh yeah um so that's that one and um no if, if, if there's somebody that you think um you know you wanted to give someone a really big surprise and they were they were into like his historical people you know like this or they were really into kind of the english um vibe and uh, those kind of perfumes uh, you know, especially with that presentation, I think that would be quite amazing to, to get somebody off yourself if you just thought that this was really something you like and that you're sort of into. Um, right, well, we're going to go on now and we're going to go on to the next one. And um, this one, um, it has got pretty much the um, fairly um, standard uh, design. So it has, um, it's got the, um, it's got a grey ribbon on it with the, um, the usual crystal bar thing and it has uh, the glass ball it has then the um kind of a yellowish uh juice to it so it'll be that one there so um that's what that's looking like anyway uh blenheim bouquet um yeah now this this was um sort of created in honor of um uh, again another figure um the duke of marlborough okay so it's sort of created in honor of this person and they want to capture very sort of um um they said Churchill was a fan of this one and it's sort of this uh quintessential English and it's got this kind of British humor and wit kind of theme going on and it's kind of made for this Duke of Marlborough anyway so let's get a look at so let's get a little um waff of this one and then go through some of these notes as well and see how it stands up against the one we've just reviewed Oh, wow. <laughs> Lemon. <laughs> wow. Um, oh, gosh, this is this is adorable. This is a... Whew, wow, I've got that richness. Oh, my gosh. So it's, it's lemony. Anyway, the fruit jumps out. This the opening of this one is very... Oh, wow, that is lovely. It's got that... Um, yeah, very distinctive, you know. Um, for some people, lemon isn't quite the thing you'd quite sort of imagine maybe with to be the, the main theme of a cologne, like you have um, citrus, you have kind of the generic ones really, and um, uh, then you have like, um, well, Creed Aventus is, is, um, is a lovely one, that's, that's pineapple. This is very lemony, and then it's complemented with all sorts of other things into this lovely blend. It's almost a bit gingery or something. Well, it's, it's definitely lemony, and then it's got some things going along with that so it's maybe something a little herbal and maybe something a bit spicy but again that's nice masculine fruity punchy wow it's even it's even more powerful on the opening than the previous one so nice powerful opening very lemony yeah sort of outdoorish um 
they're trying to get this theme across of um, something very British again, you know, they're always trying to do that really. And yeah, uh, so it's got um, lavender, uh, Amalfi lemon and lime, and then it has um, musk, pine and black pepper. Yeah, so you got that pine wood um, with that lemon and lime, and then you got a bit of musk in there. You've got the black pepper, you've got the lavender, and all together, it's, it's a delicious scent. It's really, both of these, I can't stop sniffing them. The other one now, it's a bit softer, but it's, oh, it's a different one. And Ah, oh dear. Well, um, okay, so, yeah, the, this this one that's very lemony, the um, Blen and Bouquet, um, I'm thinking that that could also be just a day a day scent, um, and um, hmm, yeah, yeah, you'd have to want to give up really quite a fruity sort of um, but it's also got that bitterness, hasn't it? So because it's lemon, and then it's got these other things that round it up and just make it a lovely kind of very attractive uh, masculine scent. I mean, it's it's really quite distinctive. I haven't smelled something like that before, and I haven't smelled like something really like this before either. So they're both very interesting to to get into. Um, now, if I were to, to purchase one or the other, or if I were to advise somebody, well, I mean, it really does depend on their taste. I mean, um, I, I still think um, the uh, presentation for Blen and Bouquet is, is um, I mean, I got a grey ribbon. I mean, and it's not as colourful. I mean, it has got that nice kind of yellowish um, kind of juice going on. But I would probably only just give it to this one, the, the tragedy of Lord George, with the uh, the, uh, the whole deer theme going on. I think that one just um, just got something for me. This one with the lemon, it would, might take me a bit of a while to get used to that very lemon and limeish kind of. Um, but it has got lots of other complimenting things, so uh, only a very close second. And this one is perhaps a little more powerful on its opening with that sort of lemony. This might catch you a bit more, but this one is a bit more subtle and it's it's just very rich as well. So they're both absolutely beautiful, they're both adorable. And um, let me know if you think uh, you'd be you'd be able to make a choice between the two and uh, which one you might go for, maybe. Uh, but th that is a little look at those two. And you know, I, I think I think of the two again. Yeah, this one might be a bit more. Um, for formal things so this one might be a little more because it's kind of fruity and uh, herby and woodsy uh you might you might be able to sort of get away with wearing that in more places more often more times of the, the day of the year um so um in a way it's kind of even really although if i were to buy one i would still probably go for the that one the tragedy of lord george and that's my uh, take on that um so thanks for being with me again for another video and hoping to see you again uh, as we continue to go through these and shouldn't be too many more videos now and we'll be done with that um, with the scent library. So thanks for watching again and as always, march forward and smelling good.